Jamaican patty, a famous flaky puff pastry that's lightly colored, golden yellow, folded to accommodate most watering spiced ingredients. From beef to chicken, from chicken to callaloo, and the list goes on, catering to all. Let me know in the comment section what patty do you prefer. Today, I'll be showing you how I remake my homemade version of this delicacy. Join me and don't forget, if you have not yet subscribed, please click that subscribe button to keep up with my shenanigans. Or if you just love beef patty or whatever patty you love. And don't forget to give this video a like. Now let's get this show on the road. Love is in your soul. Your price is higher than gold. So guys, to start off this recipe, I am going to sift my dry ingredients right now. So first off, can you guys see that? So the recipe calls for two cups of butter, two cups of all-purpose flour, not cake and pastry, all-purpose. So here I have one cup. Oh, I should have sipped it. Uh, okay, let me just. Okay, I'm ready now. So with your sieve, I never know what can be within the flour. One cup. Gonna sieve all of that. Yeah. Can't throw that away. And then another cup, which is two. Just throw away the excess flour there. So now the other dry ingredient is baking powder. I'm gonna use a teaspoon. I don't have the, the measuring um, teaspoon, the measuring cup that says a teaspoon, so I'm just gonna use my indiscretion and go for like this amount would be a you know to just give the, the crust a bit of softness, fluffiness, however you like to describe it and save all of that and just for a little bit of sweetness just gonna add take out this now some white or granulated sugar half teaspoon to be exact so that's all the dry ingredients it also want a pinch of salt but the butter that i'll be using and i'm sorry for this workstation the butter that i'll be using it's already salted so you don't want that added salt for it to be too salty but add a pinch of salt if you're using unsalted butter so now that's gonna take the cushions of my finger to work forget this guys i was measuring all the butter to add the butter and my shortening into the mixture i know they always say it's not good to use your fingers since we produce body heat and the heat would just melt the butter and so forth but I'm, i still do it you know so yeah i'm using half cup of butter half cup of shortening so editing me here i did not use half cup of shortening you'll see why so um i just had to put that out there that's um one stick of butter if you want to know the equivalent so here i have the butter so i'm just gonna like you know you want it cold but mine is feeling soft so i'm just gonna work quick you know i just take my hands and okay this bowl is too little but i'm gonna make it work i think i should stand up for this What we are going for is a flaky texture like breadcrumbs so that's why I am combining the fat or the butter into the flour to get that type of texture. So I want it looking like breadcrumbs you know that flakiness that's what give it the flakes the crust. what I started to realize is that my butter wasn't cold enough so when I'm incorporating it the few times it was starting to melt more and more which caused the mixture to look messy 
Cause look at my hands right now. Like, yeah, we're supposed to get messy, but it was just too soft, you know, trying to crumble it together with the flour. But I still somehow managed to make it work. I want you guys to see my failures as well, not just my winning, so you guys can learn from it. Going in now with the mud, the shortening, sorry. Oh, the shortening is tough, boy. So this is where I got frustrated because the margarine was tough like rock so I had to use just what would you call it now like about two ounces. I don't know what's the equivalent but I know it was a small piece of margarine why do I keep calling it margarine shortening sorry and the butter was too soft at the beginning as you guys could see But I still try to make it work. What I'm trying to achieve right now is to get what I can of the shortening incorporated into the, the, the mixture. But it was getting soft as I went along. So I'll probably just cut the video somewhere here. You don't want to see me going into all of that. Look at it guys. Like I was getting fed up but I still, you know, didn't give up. <laughs> so because my butter was... I don't mean, you know, the, the butter gets softer than the shortening, so the shortening kind of got like, you know, wasn't so soft to incorporate into this here. I'm just going to clean up my station, do the next step, and then get back to you. So now, I am going to pour, well first, let me just do this, since things are not going as, as, as smoothly as I wanted it to go. You know, many people use curry powder and turmeric to get the color, but I find that food coloring, egg powder, sorry, does wonders. Like, just a little bit go far away. Like, hmm, you understand? I can't use too much. See how my hand gets already? Then, ice cold water. Sure, it's cold like an ice. So it's about to up the bottle. Bad idea. But that got cost me. But it's worth it. <laughs> so this is how it looks. Don't know if you can see the color is there. So I'm just gonna take my time now, pour it. You see that color? That's the color we want. So I'm just gonna take my hand now and yeah, try to put it into a ball. Okay, this is successful. Okay, what's happening today? Let's so pour some more. And next I need to add just a tip. I'm just gonna add some in the dough. Just like a a tip to work in there and pour a bit more water use an indiscretion in doing this that's all I can say that's what I'm doing right now my indiscretion For a couple minutes, I know that's wrong in the book of making patties, but just to get the color, this is the color, right, guys? Like an orangish, yellowish color. So, yeah, let me see how it looks. This looks like the color of patty to me. So, um, this is the consistency. It's not supposed to be, you know, all uh, like needed already if that makes sense because you want the, the added flour to be on the board we are going to roll it out so yeah this is it just gonna take my cling flame wrap now and just wrap this up and put it in the fridge for about 30 minutes and then start getting the rolling part of it started so yeah 
this is how I do my party. So now we're gonna wrap this up. And put it in the fridge. So to do this um veggie mints, are you seeing it there? Oh yeah. To do this veggie mints guys, veggie meat. <coughs> Sorry. I am going in with my natural light, delicious, tasty veggie meat. This is what I'll be using. So I thought we had onion, we had scallion, we had all those good spices to go with this. To my surprise, we didn't. So all that I have to use as seasoning, I bought these to go with it all-purpose seasoning and brown stew seasoning so i wanted that kind of like you know when you get the beef patty and it's so runny smooth it's like you know that spice that stew whatever you like to call it so i thought these would work perfectly when i read it though it has in um cane water cane vinegar that cane vinegar but what caught my attention was it had the salt it had the onion Kelly and scotch, scotch bunny pepper, tomato paste, thyme, garlic, those things that I don't have. So I thought these two work perfectly. I'm wondering if I should use just this alone or just use both of them and see whatever concoction I can produce with these two. Um, well, in the too long. We have some garlic. Let's start the chunks. The mix, veggie mix, because it's the smaller ones. So I'm debating whether I should use everything in this pot. You know what? Gonna use it. Yeah. Gonna do that. So now just set in the water in my pan so the veggie mix can come to a boil so it softens. And then you can add my spices once it simmer down. I hope I'm using the right terms, okay? Don't drag me, don't judge me. Correct me, but don't judge me. <laughs> so go into my stove. Put it on the stove. You really have to make the water boil to the next stuff. Which thing? So two to five minutes in, this is how it's starting to look. I want you guys to see how it progressed over time, and it started to smell like cup soup or ramen noodles. Is that how you would call it? Yeah, that's how it started to smell to me. So now I'm just going to add in two. Love of garlic. Kind of like putting in smaller pieces. You don't have to do this, you can put them in. But no, just gonna go back in, stir this up. It's coming together. Okay, I'm back to check on it. This is what's happening. Go and taste it. See. It's soft, but I'm gonna make it do a little bit more because I want to like stew. So because it's the first time I'm using these, I want to see how it tastes. Sticking texture. I don't know if you can see that. No sweetness, just salty, very salty. So have to be careful. Oh my gosh, man. Then here's the seasoning, so it's salty and thick. That's all I can say. Now let's see the difference with the all-purpose that was the brown stew. Let's see what the difference is. The all-purpose is different in color. 
it's more like say um like yellow i was gonna say savory this tastes like you know the noodle you know chicken noodle that we have that's the thing i'm getting if i had it i'll show you guys but i don't but this is very you know, I have a lot of spice and it's salty as well. What's with the salt? I have to be careful how much I had it. Because you don't need no more salt. It's already salty. I'm going to probably use a sprinkle with a bit of sugar in my sauce, you know, to give it that salty plus sweet. So, yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention they're both hot, it as in pepper in it. So, yeah, you can do the scotch with pepper. I love the all purpose, I don't know why, but this brown stew go with the theme that I want. I want like a brown stew looking type of feeling. Do now is strain the mince into this, take off the excess water, and then in in the same pot put some oil and the all purpose seasoning and brown stew to a tablespoon of sugar to get that all, you know, to get the spice already and go in. So this is how it looks now can work with this. This is what I'm going for. Yeah. It looks better in real than on camera. So this is how it looks. Yum yum. All that excess water drain off. So in the same pot, Going in with some oil, not a lot. Some of the all purpose. Don't know if you can see clearly about that much of brown sugar. Maybe you could add it to your eyes. See all of that simmering down. Look at that. Mixing it all together. Going in with my brown stew now. Mix that in. This is it, guys. All finished. This is what we want. So yummy. So now that's gonna sprinkle some black pepper, which I forgot to add. Well, it's never too late. Ooh, look at that. So now that we're finished with the mince onto the patty dough, so I'm starting off by flooring my cutting board since I've chosen not to do it in the kitchen and wanted a clean surface to work with and this also helps the dough from sticking onto my cutting board and I am also flooring my rolling pin so this also helps to prevent the dough from sticking onto the rolling pin because when you're going to roll out your dough you don't want the dough to be sticking I know I'm saying dough a lot of times you're going to hear it a lot in this section in this part of the video but you don't want the dough to stick onto the rolling pin you want to work freely so you can roll it to the desired shape or the desired length you want so you have to continually flower or dust lightly dust your rolling pin as you go along every time you see that it needs more flour onto it then you go ahead and do that but you also have to careful you don't have too much flour but i don't think that's going to be a problem for me you're going to see why so that's what i'm trying to do right now as i roll the dough i would go in with some flour lightly dust it because it would look a little sticky it would feel a little sticky and me trying not to see if it was going to come off the chopping board the cutting board it was starting to crumble and tear apart so this is where mr. trouble decided to come and visit so now I had a issue to get the dough from tearing apart so I had to go in and knead it again to be honest guys that this isn't my first time doing this but looking back now I could say just because I changed the quantity of the fat which is the butter and the shortening so I feel that is where the problem lies 
the, the the quantity is different from when I did it in the past it's more than it was back then so that's why I guess I'm encountering this problem so the dough kept tearing apart and I had to go in and roll the dough again with my rolling pin had some flour and eventually this didn't work so off camera and I apologize I did not get to show you guys because of technical difficulties I placed the dough in the glass bowl and added some more of the water that had the um, the egg powder in it and use some flour it's just like I'm kneading the dough back again if that makes sense and I got the, the desired texture that I wanted and somehow some miracle it turned out um, good to be honest you know so yeah i was trying like at this point i was frustrated because it kept tearing as you can see <sighs> may i tell you but as i said off camera i did it so you won't get to see that part and you all you also won't get to see the part where i added the veggie meat into it just because as I said technical difficulty I do apologize I'll probably have to do that part over for you guys to see if you really want me to do it back over then I will you know but I was just trying something out and yeah I'm able to show you guys like this is how I kind of got it to look as you can see it was better this way you know so I actually got it so now um, I'm just checking these three that I did in the oven turning them over so each side can be baked you know some of them is looking a bit well the one on my left is looking a bit soggy because I didn't fill it enough with the veggie meat so the more you fill it with your fillings whether it meat beef the fatter it looks so yeah guys tell me down in the comment section how you think um, I went on or I did you know I always love to hear your feedback whether it's negative but don't go so hard on me okay or positive so yeah these are how they look um beautiful golden brown patties <laughs> yeah I am sorry if you're hearing background noises those are my neighbors and my mom <laughs> so yeah my mom was sharing them out for us to have and look at that please don't mind the tear at the top <laughs> I think when I was trying to take it out it kind of tore so I'm just going to cut into it now for you guys to see how inside of it looks mm, look at that beautiful <laughs> Well, this is the end of the video if you have enjoyed don't forget to give this video a thumbs up thank you guys so much for watching this video and sticking by me um tell me what you think about this video i know it's not perfect i can do a lot better but please see with me so until next time bye bye guys thank you